Hey guys, UDG here, back with another episode from the Recreate tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to recreate the teleport between levels system from, I mean, initially like most games. But uh, basically what this will do is if you walk on top of the little teleporter pad that we have, you will stand on it, it'll play a loading screen and then it will transition you to whichever level it is you have selected. So to do this, I'm going to begin by cloning my first person character that I have, the uh, template. I'm going to call this uh, level transition system. And I'm going to hit create. Now this system should be pretty simple. I think most of the time will be spent on just getting stuff set up. The actual blueprints that are necessary for it are very simple. But uh, let me go ahead and launch it. Uh, also, another thing is the uh, UI for this. You don't need anything for it. You can make it all in uh, Unreal Engine 4 itself. Alright, so. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build our teleporter itself. So I'm going to go into my blueprints here. I'm going to make another one called uh, Teleporter. And then we're going to go ahead and make a blueprint class. Make it an actor. I call it BP underscore teleporter. I'm going to open this one up. And then we're going to come into our viewport. And then we're going to create a cylinder. And then we're going to have to scale this cylinder down a bunch because it's way too tall at the moment. So I'm going to get on the z-axis. We'll go like 0.2. I think that should be good. You know, just to be safe, we'll go 0.1 just in case it's too tall. And then we're going to have to give it a... Um, Hitbox as well, or a collision box. I'm gonna make a not a cylinder one, is there? No. Okay. Make a spherical collision. I'm gonna have to scale it up a bunch. Um, I scale them just that axis. No, it has to be the whole thing. I thought that was the case, but I wanted to just double check. Make it about yay big. Ah, uh, one more thing. We also we have to make this a trigger. There we go. So we can go file save. Um, I think while we're at it, we should also make the HUD. So we go back into our file, and then we'll come under. Where is it? Uh, use the interface, and then widget blueprint. We go and call this uh, WB underscore. Uh, let's go. Loading screen. Open that up. So this is gonna be really simple. There's only a couple things we need for this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a background. Um I think for the background we'll just make it just one color, nothing too fancy. Um how do I do this again? I think what I used last time was image, right? And then we got to size content, then make it. Uh, how big does it have to be? Uh, the full thing is what, 1920? Oh, yeah, I'm in the wrong spot. 1920. Uh, Okay, now I'm going to pick a color for this one. Uh, the color that I tend to use, let's make sure I've got it, is uh, zero, 01, zero, 01, 01, zero, 01, zero, 01, FF. And then it is 101010 zero, one, zero, one, zero, FF. There we go. Now you can pick any color you want, this is just my personal preference. So next thing we're going to do is going to come and get a text box. And make sure you drag it on top of the canvas panel. And then I'm going to change the text, I'm going to call it loading. And then I am going to make it bigger, so I'm going to go... Uh, I think around 200-ish would be good. I'll actually make it a bit bigger, we'll go 300 by 100 uh, and then the text font 
font is 64. Okay, so I'm now going to change the anchor point, make that the center, and reset all of its positions. I uh, did not mean to reset those last two. There we go. And I'm going to. Actually, I can just turn size to content. I don't even need those two. Oh no, sorry, it's alignment. There we go. <laughs> Basically by doing it 0.5 by 0.5, normally the point would be up here by this top little corner. But by going 0.5 it brings it in and then 0.5 down to the dead center. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make the throbber now. Now if you want you can use a circular throbber, the difference between it is it's just a circular uh, loading screen. Instead of having the one that I'm going to use which is a normal throbber, which as you can see here is a couple dots in the corner. So we're going to make a number of pieces, I'm going to set this to 10. Uh, set our anchor point to the middle again, and then reset its positions on the x and y axis. We'll align it to 0.5 and 0.5 again. And then we'll change its position y, and bring it down. Go with 100. Oops, a little bit too much. There we go. And then I'm going to change its size. We'll change the x to go with 300, and the y, let's try 70. Uh, you can increase these if you want. This is just what I'm going with at the moment. You should increase image size as well. 27 by 27. Basically what that does, if you didn't see the same, it basically just makes the uh, little image here bigger. Because what it, what it basically is doing is this one little square that you appear is basically just being duplicated over and over again. So by increasing the one, it increases all of them. But as you can see now, it just constantly plays that over and over again. And so the loading text, you can change this to whatever you want. You can make it a background picture from your game. You can change the color. You can change the actual image of it. So if you don't want this to be a dot, you want it to be something else like say a smiley face, you can come here and change that. You can do whatever you want with it. But personally, I don't like anything too complicated, especially if I'm just prototyping. So this for me would be perfectly fine. Now you don't have to come into your graph and do anything here. This is perfectly fine as is. You don't have to code anything there. Uh, so once you're in your teleporter blueprint, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a variable. So we're going to call this uh, level, sorry, load level, and this will be the level you load. And make sure this is instance editable and it's set to a name, which is just here. And then compile and save that. Don't change this one here, we'll be doing that manually in game. Okay, and then the other thing we need to do is then get a event actor begin that spell begin overlap and then from this we're going to drag out we're going to cast it to whichever character you have so in my case my guy is called dp um pretty sure it's third third person uh cast to bp third person what do i call it uh third person character there we go so cast to third person character. I'm gonna connect those. We're gonna connect it down there as well. And now we need to get our create uh, widget. So we go create um, widget, connect that, and then we add whichever whatever you called it. So in my case, I called it WB underscore loading screen. And then the owning player is get player control. Now we then need to put that on our viewport, so we go add to the viewport and then connect them. And now at the moment when this pops up, your character, even though he has this uh, UI covering his screen, will still be able to move around and look about. So we need to make sure he can't do that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get uh, a player controller. We're going to drag out, we're going to go set ignore. Uh, move input, connect that, and we go set ignore hook input, and connect that one. Now make sure you tick both of these. If you don't tick them, then it won't do anything. They'll just continue to be able to move around. And now from that, we're going to add a delay. You don't have to do this, but just for the purpose of showing you uh, what it actually looks like, because this is a really small project file, and the loading the different levels is so small that you won't actually see the loading screen. It will just quickly fly over it. So for the purpose of the video, I'm going to add a 5 second delay. Otherwise it will, again, just completely skip it and go straight to the level. And then we're going to get our open level. And then we then drag in our variable we made earlier, connect that. And now, 
Uh, we currently have it made so that they can't move and they can't look around. So we need to now turn that off now that they're loaded into the level. So again, we get our player controller, which you can do by just selecting it and then pasting it. And we drag out and we go set ignore. Okay, this time we go reset ignore. This will just reset it back to its default so your player can move around. And the same thing for look. Actually, I already have look. We need to move, sorry. Reset move input. Like that. Okay. So now that we have all of this, what happens is is that our event actor begin overlaps. So anytime it overlaps with the third person character, because that is our actor we have set, it will then load the widget blueprint and then adds it to the viewport and makes it so our character, uh, our player, sorry, can't move. They can't look around and then it adds a delay just to five seconds so you can see the loading screen because at the moment it'll just fly by it because it has nothing else to load. And then opens the level, which is whatever level name you have set here, which I'll show you how you set that level name level name, sorry, later. And then uh it then turns the look input and move input back to its defaults, and that's it. So we can go ahead and name this. So I'm gonna call this uh transfers player. Actually, I'm just going to spell it wrong. Uh, to new level when overlapping with teleporter BP. Teleport BP as I spelt it. Okay, so now what we have to do is go ahead and drag our teleporter out. Okay, so that should be fine to walk on. So now we also have to create another level. I don't currently have any other levels, so I'm going to go ahead and just for the purpose of the video, find my default map level and then just duplicate it. Third person except map 2, I'm just going to call this level 2. And then just to make sure that you can tell that there is some difference between the maps, I'm going to go ahead and make this wall, uh, change the material of it, let's give it that one, there we go. So now you can see it's got this weird texture on it, whereas the default level does not. So now if we set this one here and then come down under default, you can see it says load level, which is a variable we made earlier. And now change it to level 2, and this is um, caps lock sensitive and like everything else. It has to be exactly what it is. So if I did level 2 without a capital, it wouldn't load level 2 here. So now that we've got that, I'm just going to save, and then we'll press play. And now as soon as I walk on top of this, you'll notice... Uh, It'll pop up with the screen, but it won't be working properly. Like it, it won't cover the screen. See how there's a gap to the side of it, but I can't move around at all. You can't tell, but I am moving. And it's loaded me in, and I can now move around properly again. The thing that happened there... Oh, also, I need to delete that. It shouldn't be there. It's just because I duplicated it. The thing that's causing that is when... Uh, I mean, this screen. This little screen here is not 1920 by 1080 So if I was to go here... And then go into standalone game, save selected, and then press play. And then let the standalone load and then go into full screen. Uh, you can do that by pressing shift F1, I think it is, or should I shift F1 maybe? Uh, oh, I don't know what I just pressed. I guess I'll just press F11. I was trying to bring up the mouse cursor. Uh, oh, I deleted the wrong one, let's see. I accidentally deleted the teleporter from here. I was meant to delete it from the other map. There you go, make sure it's got two again. Yeah. And now we play it. So now that we're in this mode, we can just press F11 to go full screen. You'll see now that when I stand on it, it covers my screen entirely. I can't walk around, I can't do anything, not that you can tell. That now loads me into the new level with the uh, texture of my mannequin that I put on the wall. So you can use this for anything. If you're having some kind of platformer game and then at, at the end of it you want them to have a little teleporter they can walk through, then they can do it like this. So if you want to do it like Mario, instead of having the little uh, cylinder that I had, you could change that to the pole they have. Or if you're doing it something like, uh, I don't know, Half-Life, you can change it to the teleporter they have at the end of levels. You can do anything with it. As long as you use the same code, it will always teleport you between it. 
Anyway guys, that is the end of this tutorial. If you have any other ideas for tutorials you'd like to see, let me know down below in the comments. If you need any help with this tutorial or get stuck on anything in it, just let me know below and I can help you out. Anyway guys, that's all. See ya.